Hello everyone, my name is Frey Ramirez and today I'm going to share with you a video with our experience about cattle activity recognition. The cattle activity recognition, using recurrent neural networks and TensorFlow on Android smartphones, is a work developed by Colombian researchers from the Grika and Mosar groups. The objective of this work was to develop a tool for cattle activity recognition, which can be easily used for researchers or farmers to record the cattle behavior in short periods of time, for example, during 24 hours. Our tool is based on commercial systems designed to record the animal's activities changes. Let remember how these systems work. While older systems use pedometers to measure the number of steps a cow took each day, Modern activity monitors use accelerometers to measure vibrations or small changes in a cow's movement. There are three parts to cow activity monitors. The first is an activity tag containing the accelerometer, which is mounted on either the cow's leg, to a collar around her neck, or on her ear, depending on the brand of activity monitor used. The activity tag uses radio frequency identification, RFID, technology to wirelessly transfer data the second part, an antenna, which reads information transmitted wirelessly from the activity tag. And then the third part, which is a computer or other device that is used to interpret the data from the tag and present it to the farmer. As we can see, the implementation of a monitoring system of the animal's behavior is a complex and expensive process. To avoid this complexity, smartphones can be used. Have you ever wondered how your phone manages to know what direction you're holding it? It's using a device called an accelerometer. It works by sensing the acceleration of gravity, and then you can calculate what direction the phone is facing. The data from smartphone accelerometers are while used to develop human activity recognition systems. These systems aim to provide information on human physical activity and to detect simple or complex actions in a real-world setting. It allows computer systems to assist users with their tasks and to improve the quality of life in areas such as senior care, rehabilitation, daily life logging, personal fitness, and assistance for people with cognitive disorders. Our hypothesis is that by using the process to develop smartphone applications for human activity recognition, it is possible to develop applications to record cattle activity. To develop this type of application, three main steps are necessary. Data acquisition for model training. Model building and training. And application deploy. For model training, a text file with the three axes accelerometer's values and its corresponding activity is necessary. Traditionally, video analysis or direct observation and register are used to establish which activity corresponds with the accelerometer's values. In our work, we use direct observation and a cloud database to store the activity's changes. An Android smartphone was placed in the backside of the cow's head. Every 100 milliseconds, this device records the smartphone's three-axis accelerometer values and its corresponding activity. To define activity changes, an observer uses another smartphone to send the current activity to a cloud database. And this activity record can be read immediately by the smartphone in the cow. The text file obtained with this process contains 55 hours of monitoring of 20 dairy cows for 30 days. We used an Artificial Recurrent Neural Network RNN, with Long Short-Term Memory Model LSTM, to found the relationship between accelerometer value changes and its corresponding activities. What is a recurrent network, right? What is this, what is this thing? I've got two images here of feedforward networks. The first image is the most popular image, right? It's that uh, really funky looking neuronal 
architecture. So a better way of looking at it would be as a computation graph, a more mathematically sound way of looking at it. So if you have some input, and you know the input could be anything, what you would do is you would multiply the input by the weight matrix, add a bias value, and then activate the result of that. And that would be your output that you then feed into the next layer. A layer, that you, the, what you see as these neurons, a layer is actually just the result of a dot product operation followed by adding a bias value if you want to add a bias, which you should in practice, you should add a bias. And then you activate the output of that. And by activate, I mean you take the output of that dot product plus bias operation, the output of that, and you feed it into a, an activation function, a non-linearity, whether that's a sigmoid or tan h or rectified linear unit. Now, a great way to remember this whole thing is to just rap about it. So input times weight, add a bias, activate, repeat, here we go. Input, sing it with me, times weight, add a bias, activate, repeat, and you just do that for every layer. You just repeat that process. First, we need to import the database. Remember that each line in the text file must contain the three accelerometer values and their respective activity. Five activities were considered in our work. Grazing, intake of concentrate, rumination, resting and walking. As we can see, each activity has its own patterns of accelerometer's values. Big numbers overpower little numbers. To not let that happen, we normalize the data to values between 0 and 1. Since computers work in a world of ones and zeros, a technique known as the one-hot encoding is used. The pandas library has a function called get underscore dummies to get one-hot encoding. The accelerometer and activity data were divided into two parts, 80% for training and 20% for a test. The keras library was used to build the model. The model uses a LSTM layer as input. The dropout layer is a regularization technique to reduce the complexity of the model to prevent overfitting. Two dense layers which are the deeply connected neural network, and one additional dense layer is output. The model training was performed with 100 epics numbers. After the training, an accuracy of 0.98 and a loss of 0.1 were obtained. Using the confusion matrix, we can see that our model can classify all the activities with high accuracy. Except for the walking activity. It is probably by the low size of data used in the training for this activity. We used the Android Studio software to deploy our app. In this work, we used TensorFlow, because the TensorFlow libraries are an easy-to-use method to implement neural networks on Android. As we can see, this work shows that it is possible to develop machine learning-based tools. These tools can be easily used in some scenarios when the implementation of a commercial tool is not possible.